have a new administration it's another time for us to be able to have a look and see what are those things that we can quickly push in to be able to find out what needs to be done to take advantage of the new uh, era so for instance um, following the announcement of the you know the team that is going to head the cabinet uh, positions are some of you thinking should you be running quickly too you know, are, you, are some of you asking yourselves, where are these offices located? Because I need to go and put in my, you know, my, okay, your CV is one. <laughs> your CV is one. <laughs> but, but are you also thinking, I need to be able to go and tell them that for me it's very important that when you talk of free education, free education for the girl child also means the ability to remain in school because you've been provided for with respect to sanitary wear that normally prevents girls from going to school. Are you thinking that in my county, this and this happens and I need to run to the Ministry of Justice and tell them that with respect to men and women, men and women this and that. So these are some of the things that the distinguished uh, ladies on this panel will help us to think about. Now, um, in particular, as I welcome Grace Mbugwa, who is supposed to tell us more about the Women's Charter, a very, very important document. Um, we want to be able to know, we already have these resources, one of which has been mentioned by the, the Acting Executive Director, Ms. Carol Lintari. We want to know um, the resources or the resources that already exist. What are we going to do with them? The Women's Manifesto that Ms. Lintari has talked about. And now we have the Women's Charter, a very, very important document that Ms. Mbogwe is going to enlighten us on. Uh, I'll go straight into the process. What is the Women's Charter? Where did it come from? The Charter was, estab was developed in between 2011 and uh, January 2012. When we launched it, we had gathered information from 22 counties, and this was done by those partners you see in that list. In their own networks, because they have extensive networks, they were able to gather information of what are the priorities that women would want to see addressed by this new government, even as we prepare ourselves for devolution. Why the Charter? There are three things that we wanted to see being achieved by the Charter. One to provide priorities for women of Kenya in terms of addressing social, political, and economic issues that are affecting them today. Then number two, in to ensure that we have equal access to opportunities, agenda setting, that means we are also setting an agenda, even as we, well, the government is coming up, we have an agenda already in our hands that we would want to give them. And also, we want to see that the county and the national uh, leaders are able to appreciate the needs and the issues that are affecting women. In lobbying, in lobbying for issues to be adopted, in advocacy, you always must have a document 
Carol showed us a document before. So these documents we have produced, not that we like documents, but it helps. Because behind the documents, we have the statistics, we have the proof, and people can read. You can leave people. I want to talk about uh, the position of having a structure that will oversee and deliver for the women. When I go back to the Beijing Platform for Action, one of the recommendations was that structures of implementation of all the 12 areas of concern had to be established by government. By the time Kenya went to Beijing, we had a structure known as the Women's Bureau. And we found that structure wanting in many ways. It was wanting in terms of resources, because it was only a division. In the government, if you are a division, it means when they are doing the budget for the ministry, they do the budget for the departments, OK? Then in the department, then they are doing for divisions. But again, in the government system, Ministries are ministries. They are big ministries, uh, status ministries, ministries that when they cough, then everybody up to the location reacts, isn't it? The gender ministry, uh, my small analysis, but we are going to produce a paper again to argue like the, uh, the charter, had the problem, first of all, when it was a ministry of gender, it was put together with sports. So sports just overshadowed us. And the culture, and, the, and then now it was children, and what have you, and what have you. Luckily, we had secretaries to, to individuals. We saw a, a bit of a change, but it was still having the problem of resources and staff. So that in, within it, we still even looked for funding from development partners to drive the agenda. So when you look at the zero-sum analysis, you say, was the government really committed to give us a structure that would deliver? That is just to give you uh, um, what is playing out for the women's movement and for the, the new government. So us, in the first 100 days, we need to really be clear about what structure which structure and therefore also to say that this structure should be strengthened should have the resources and should have the goodwill the goodwill and the power you know we want everything that will move the women's agenda forward I think that um, we have exciting times in Kenya. I really, I, I want to look at it positively. I know that um, I know that there have been sentiments. In fact, I, when when the question was posed about the Ministry of Gender, are we are we worse off now that we do not have a Ministry of Gender? And I heard some people saying yes, that we are. Um, but like Deborah, I want to say this, um, that I really don't think that we are worse off because um, I, I, want to, I, want us, I want to bring us to the point that for us as the National Women's Steering Committee and as the women's movement, we've been fighting for women's empowerment, okay? And one of the things when we talk about uh, gender, we talk about gender and women's empowerment. Unfortunately, over the years, the term gender has become synonymous with woman. And yet, in the reality of it, women get lost in gender and gender mainstreaming because it is not specific to women. And so we find that we do get lost in that mainstream, you know? And, and the issues are not clearly understood. So for me, I think that um, we need to look at the positives because the Jubilee administration, which is the new government that has come in, has been very, very um, articulate on the issues concerning women's empowerment. We are in a good place. And it, the president has also said that he is going to implement the constitution. The constitution in and of itself, even as we implement it, it has very specific requirements for that, that, that must be delivered that are specific to women. So far, we have he has the the president has demonstrated that political will by actually ensuring that his cabinet does have the required numbers so i want to believe that on all other pronouncements that he will indeed walk the talk
we need to engage at the community level to ensure inclusivity, okay? At the county level, how are women going to work with the governors? Okay, how can they engage with the governors? Okay, we have been told of economic empowerment. That procurement, most of it is going to be at the county governments, isn't it? That is where all the construction is going to start, where offices are going to be established. Most of the procurement will be at the county level. And we are told a third must go to women. We are told there are funds here. Those women at the county level, they don't have registered companies, isn't it? The government is saying the company must have been registered for how many years? Is that really workable for us? So the structured voice must take this back to the government. That for the women, we don't understand how we are going to engage. Yes, the funds are here. OK? How do we get these funds so that we are able to procure the goods that are required by the county government, okay? That will be a starting point for the structured voice to pick up and engage with the government. As we begin these first 100 days, we need to engage with the women who have been nominated and elected and appointed. Please, we need to start engaging immediately. And this formal voice must engage with the women and remind them that the voice got them there. That we must work together as we take the women's agenda ahead. That they are there within the government to actually make the government accountable for the first 100 days.